In this video, I'll show you how you can set up this exact dashboard on your own computer for you to use with your own niche and all completely for free. Before we move on to how to install this, let me show you exactly how it works. Let's go over to the control panel. In the control panel, let's use Janice Moore as the competitor that we'll be inserting. He's an awesome YouTuber, by the way. All we have to do is grab the channel URL, then the channel ID, and for that, you just have to click on more, scroll down, share channel, copy channel ID, paste that up here. And now for the channel name, let's grab just Janice Moore, paste that in there, now you'll notice that the channel is down here, but you'll get a message saying update to get status. All we have to do is just hit the update button, which will trigger the NAN workflow. This NAN workflow will be in the description all for free. As you can see, it's running right now because we clicked the button and what it's doing is just going over to the channel, getting all the videos, trying to filter out the shorts because we don't want to find the shorts for this specific case, only long form videos, place them all in a Postgres database, and then we'll fetch them in our dashboard right here. Let me hit the wipe cache and you'll notice that now we have a card with the channel that we just inserted. I believe that any company needs to keep track of what their competitors are doing. And so does content creators because people are constantly searching for something either in YouTube, in TikTok, in Instagram, or in Google in general. And not only the trends, but also what's grabbing people to click on the videos. That's why I presented all the thumbnails in here because I can have a visual understanding of what are the videos that are most clicked on. So just really having a dashboard like this that is fully automated and I can keep track of what's happening at any given time really helps me a lot. Up here, you'll notice that I have a bunch of dropdowns. I have just a few channels here, but it's just because I want to make this video. I also have a sort by dropdown where I can sort by views, likes, or comments. I can order them ascending or descending. I can also filter the videos by a time frame. So if I select just the last week, I'll only get seven days old videos. And finally, the outlier multiplier, which I believe to be the most important metric here. First to understand this metric, let's go over to the control panel. Let me click on that. Click on Nick. Next channel have an average views of 17,000, nearly 18,000. And that's just for the last three months because I, I want to get the average of the last three months, not the overall average of the channel because that really gives us a better average views for the present context. Going back to the dashboard and defining the outlier multiplier of 2x means that every video from Nick with over 36,000 views is an outlier because it has twice the amount of the average views from the past three months. So scrolling down here, you'll notice that one of his videos has 326%, and that is 326% in reference of his average views. By clicking on the card, I can keep track of more metrics. Here I have the channel average as well. I know that this video reached 59,000 views, got this many likes, this many comments, and so on. If I only want to grab the outliers, I can toggle this on and I'll get only the videos that were outliers because I can better understand maybe if I toggle a time frame, let's say last two weeks, we'll get only Nick's video here. But if you were to have more competitors, they would be listed down here. Or if you toggle the multiplier to let's say 1.2, you'll see that there's another Nick video. Yeah, he's absolutely smashing out there. Let me toggle this off the outlier multiplier 1.2. That's okay. Another interesting feature we have is pagination as well as caching because this ensures that we can just scroll down here and check every single video that we have. Let me click on load all because then we actually have all the videos. Uh, this is only for the past two weeks. So let me select all time. And now all the videos are, are loaded. I can click on this button, analyze, and I'll get exactly all the words that were most used in the title for these videos. N8N was the word used 27 times, followed by agents and the word free. It is my intention to eventually place a lot more features to this project, especially AI features that could analyze the titles, analyze the thumbnails and give me back exactly what's trending either in my email or either like a button, just like I implemented this analyze button up. Make sure to click the subscribe button if you want to keep track of all these new features. Now let's move on to how you can install this tool. I'm using a module from inside the classroom of the AI Forge community. You don't have to be a member. You can actually use this tool completely for free. I'll just use it as a cheat sheet for me to explain everything along the video. But the community has 1.5K members. So if you're from the community, you can just head over to the NAN Workflows Classroom. It's right over here. Click that, 
then go down to the YouTube niche research tool. So let's get started. First of all, you should install Docker. There's a lot of tutorials out there and not necessarily you need to follow these instructions over here, but if you have access to the AI Forge, you can head over to Docker overview installation and then also to installing NAN locally. But really, it is pretty intuitive. And if you need help with this, just comment below in the video and I'll try to help as much as possible. The only other things we need to install is Redis. And for that, let's open up our command prompt. Inside of the command prompt, you just paste that in, hit enter. It will already install Redis. And for me, it installed pretty fast because I already have an image of it inside of Docker. So here is my Redis container. Now we need to install Postgres. So just copy this place that in there, hit enter, and the same thing might happen. My Postgres container was just created. If you're wondering where are these commands, check the description of the video. Now you'll need to download the NAN workflow, which is also in the description of the video. When you open it up, this is how it will look like. A bunch of red borders just waiting for you to place the credential. So let's start off with Postgres. To place in this credential, I'll hit create new credential. I'll leave everything here just as is. The only thing I'll change is the host and I'll change it to host.docker.internal. Hit save and this should be working just fine. If it didn't, make sure to go over to Docker and check if your containers are running. With that done, just go back to your canvas. You can just double click on all these Postgres nodes. Now we only need to add two credentials, which is this one from the get videos node, as well as the find video data node. To get these credentials, you can sign up completely for free in Google Cloud Console. Create your project, click on get started, place in your app name, select your own email as the user support email, create external, hit next, email address, you can place in your same email address, hit next, agree to the user data policy, continue, create. Now, as soon as that's done, you can head over to clients, create client, application type will be a web application, place in whichever name you like. Now down in the authorized redirects URI, come back here to your workflow, double click this, copy this URL right here, go back there, add it right here, hit create. Now these are your keys. So just copy that, head back here, client ID is that, your client secret is this. So place that in there. We still have one more step to do, which is to add the YouTube API. Click on enable APIs and services, type in YouTube, click on YouTube data API V3, and now just hit the enable button. With that done, and you'll also want to create a API key. So just click on the plus create credentials, click on API key. And this is the API key we'll use in just a bit. So copy that down, but you can always access it just going over to the credential section and clicking on the show key button. Now there's still one step left, which is going over to the audience page and adding yourself as a test user. So just type in your own email here, hit save. And now let's go back to the NAN workflow, click on sign in with Google, select your own email, hit continue. Now these are all the scopes we need to include. So just go back to Google Cloud. You want to click on the data access page, add or remove scopes. The first scope is C edit and permanently delete. So let me type that in C edit and permanently delete your YouTube videos. Let's check that. Now view private information of your YouTube channel. Type that in, remove the previous one, check that. Manage your YouTube videos. Let me remove the previous search filter. Manage your YouTube videos. Let's check that. View and manage your assets and associated. So it's this first one right here. Let me check that. And finally manage your YouTube account. Let me also check that, remove the filters and click on update. Once you click on update, all the scopes that you selected will be presented over here. Hit save. And now you can go back to your NAN workflow, select all the scopes and hit continue. Now that our YouTube account was connected, we just need to add one more credential, which is the credential for find video data. Here we want to click on create new credential, type in key for the name input, and then the value you want to place in that API that I mentioned earlier. You can now close everything, just open up the create table node, hit create step, it was successful in creating this table over at our Postgres database. Down here, I don't know why this node doesn't have a red border, but it should also use the query auth account, which is the same credential from this node over here. Hit save, make sure to toggle this on, and we are done with the NAN workflow. So we configured all the credentials, we ran the create tables node, we toggled the workflow on, and now let's move on with the dashboard. If you already have node and yarn installed, this should be really simple. Just open this repository. You can either clone this project or you can just download it as a zip file. 
As soon as you extract the project, get inside the folder. I like to run it like this, so CMD. Here you'll just want to type in yarn and all the packages will be installed. With that done, you'll want to add an environment variable here. Most people don't code. So every time I show an IDE, they seem to think that it's going to be extremely difficult. So I'll just do that inside of a text file right here in Notepad. All you really need to do is grab these credentials over here, which might be the same for everyone since we're building this locally. So save this file, go back to your folder and replace the entire name, including the .txt with .env. Hit yes and you should be good to go. Back in the command prompt, I'll type in yarn prisma generate. Now with that done, I can type in yarn dev and wait for the project to open. As soon as it's done loading, you can just head over to the dashboard. There's no videos in here because we don't have any competitor added here. So just go over to the control panel and let me use my own channel as the example. Let me copy in the channel URL. Now the channel name, I'll just grab Leonardo Gregorio. And finally for the channel ID, head down here, copy that, place that in, hit add channel. And now that was added. Now is where we're going to actually test the NAN workflow. And for that, all you have to do is click on update. It's going to trigger the workflow over here. Make sure that this is actually active because then it will be accessible. Back here in the control panel, you'll notice that I have 23 videos listed here. By clicking on it, everything is listed over here. Heading back to the dashboard might not show any of the videos. And that's because this uses a caching system. To wipe the cache, just click on the wipe cache button. And now all the videos should be loaded successfully. I believe there's a lot of tweaking around with this tool that can be done to really improve it. Also feel free to send some suggestions down below in the comment section for this video. I really hope this tool is useful for a lot of people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.